Yo, what's going on guys? Gonna be showing you how to carry on Nico jungle here in mid season 12. As a jungler, you don't necessarily want to play her on hit. You'll struggle to clear your camps and to burst people down in ganks. People are generally trying to get away from you. So having the burst is better than having sustained damage over time from on hit. On hit Nico plays best in the top lane. It's actually quite a lot of fun there and has great carry potential. So for Nico jungle, you want predator with cheap shot eyeballs, relentless celerity, water walking, and we're gonna go ahead and solo start no leash. That way the enemies don't know where you start. It gives you a huge leg up and it lets your laners get to lane on time. Just tell your laners, I don't need leash, just keep watch. And generally they will keep watch. Hopefully she doesn't bleed away a kill there and she does, that's unfortunate. You can solo start on Raptors extremely effectively with your Q because it only takes two and a couple of autos to take the whole camp. Just don't stand in the very back of it because sometimes the Raptors will pin you and it's super annoying so just auto attack in the queue make sure it hits the big one if the circle is not touching the big one it will not plume your queue has to hit a monster a champion or kill to plume and it has to be a big monster so champion big monster or kill generally get your e level two so you can kite things out better w level two isn't quite worth it it's about half the damage of your e and it doesn't actually cc so like I said, if you want to play on hit Nico, play it in the top lane. It's much better there. We're going to be looking to take three camps into a reset for the most effective, uh, safest play style. If you try to gank on low HP, it's probably not going to work. And we also want to be able to utilize our predator. Whenever your E hits something, the next thing it hits is going to be snared for even longer. So try to put your E through a, a minion before you hit a champion. Or for example, before I eat the big Krug, I put it through the medium one and that way it nearly triples the snare duration from a fraction of a second to nearly two seconds. And then we're gonna be looking for a reset if there's no easy gank. We're actually pretty healthy, all things considered. We could look for a gank if we're not worried about our top side getting stolen here. We're pretty much full HP. We're gonna get up close with our W, pressure him with autos. I don't think he has flash. We get up point blank range to land our E, that way it doesn't miss. Beautiful, beautiful. That was super clutch. It worked super well because Grace Flash was already on cooldown. So we're gonna go ahead and get some of this XP reset. Now, by showing like this, you are risking losing some top side camps. If you just wrap red Krug's reset, oftentimes your top side or your opposite side jungle, I should say, your blue side jungle will be left completely intact. So do keep that in mind. If you're worried about that getting stolen, wrap red Krug reset into your top side. When your predator is up, you can gank pretty much anything. Just come up from behind, try to get as close as possible. W, E, Q makes it very easy. Rumble is fairly healthy. We should be able to still pull it off if he stays. We have red buffs still. All right, it looks like he actually backed. This is up, we'll go ahead and take that. Shaco just died, that's perfect for me. He's playing AP Shaco. I think AP Shaco jungle is extremely overrated. I would unironically rather play Nico jungle than, uh, I just realized we shouldn't take Gromp and Blue at the same time on this champ. <laughs> I'd rather play Nico jungle than AP Shaco jungle. I just don't, it's fun, but it's not very good in my opinion. With that being said, we are taking a very high amount of damage right now. The way we kited out blue buff was very ugly. You don't want to take blue and gromp together until you're really fed or until you're a full item. Otherwise, they'll take a lot of damage like I did. There's nothing to gank. It's so annoying. There really is nothing. I should have just kept going to my wolves. Top lane's the closest thing to a gank, but it's really forced. You want to max your Q first. It gives you the most per level in terms of damage. You don't want to smite the big monster too early if there's little monsters because your Q doesn't plume unless it hits a big monster, a champion, or unless it kills something. So like, for example, if you smite your big raptor, you end up killing it way too early while the other ones are still quite healthy. You put yourself in a weird spot where your Q is your main way to actually clear a camp. 
Generally, after you get Predator Boots, you'll only take one camp or immediately look for a gank. But this game, there just hasn't really been that obvious gank opportunity. We'll Predator in. Flash EQ. Oh. That actually turned out not the best. At least we did get Shannar. I don't, how did he hit level 6 pre-6 minute mark? They're like, what the heck? Does top lane actually hit level 6, 5 minute 40? It's kind of nuts. We didn't get too much there. We used up our flash. I thought his dash was on cooldown, but obviously it wasn't. Unfortunate. Mid lane's kind of gankable. I mean, Rumble's full HP. Yon's nearly dead. That's a big minion wave, though, so I kind of want to be there for that. Because if Yon dies, I want to be able to soak. Rumble has R here, so... <laughs> I don't know. It's not gankable. Even if I come up from behind and land snare, unless you, unless Rumble's tanking turret, like, we're not going to get anything from it. We get him for EQ. He's on overheat. I need Yon to land his stuff. Rumble can't cast his R if he's already overheated. Very common Rumble mistake. Your R doesn't actually build any heat, but if you're overheated, you can't use any ability, so he kind of just wrecked himself there. We can't stay for this. I have to just pull it all the way out. That's fine. We're going to be hitting a very normal level six timing around seven minute 30 ish as a jungler. That's kind of what you're shooting for. If you leech minion XP from the waves, if you share them after successful ganks, you can definitely hit it before that. This game, our ganks honestly haven't been that successful, though. <laughs> There's been a lot of situations where we've been pathing away from our jungle for a gank, but just nothing looks like it's going to work. And that happens. Not every game is going to have ganks set up to tee off on. We're going to try to come up behind this guy with Predator. We're going to WR. Or I should say RWEQ. I really needed Yon to stay in that there longer than that you generally want to r then w but wr is essentially the same thing because your your w invisibility only lasts for uh a half a second and your r channel lasts for a second and a quarter so by r then w they don't really see the r animation when you start it so if you are w you're basically getting to surprise them more so it's generally RW, EQ. You generally EQ after the R lands. That way it's a guarantee since your R isn't really a skill shot. Predator's on a cooldown and so is our R. No shame in taking Herald here since we have top and mid prio. It looks like our top lane is doing quite well. And our bot lane is not doing the best. So top lane's our strong lane at the moment. It makes sense to play topside, that way Shen can't R whatever we're trying to gank, like he's already done. Come on, let me hit it in the back. You can't really solo dragons on Nico until you're a full item, or unless you're just crazy fed. So a full item. <laughs> you can take it if you have teammates with you, but if your teammates aren't with you, I wouldn't bother. You'll lose all your health and end up getting yourself killed by someone showing up. Our Predator's on cooldown, but our R is up. Nico R is a decently low cooldown for what it does. Come on, Yon. We're going to RW. But the Shen R comes down. If he has Flash, we're dead. Alright, he doesn't have it. Get him with the EQ. Eh, they're just too far away. Shen is actually a broken champion like rumble should have been dead two times over but shen are broken it's just too good instant surviving too dang strong we need to lay herald pre 14 minute mark we should really take it top side get the first turret gold our r's on cooldown generally want to look for hextech rocket belt as your first main item outside of Boots and Dark Seal Rush. Hextech Rocket Belt gives you the mobility and dash needed to land your R. Big R's. 
Graves is missing a chunk of health and he's not a full item. This might be doable. I'm going to W in. This dude's fast though, man. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Come on. Got him with the flash blue smite. Yumi's doing some damage though. Holy moly. Your E gets bigger when it hits something. So up besides it snaring for longer, it gets it grows larger and moves faster. So if they're moving near a minion or another enemy champion or a monster, it's a great time to E. It's gonna make it easier to land. We can't actually afford what we want. Uh, I'm thinking Lucidities actually. Nico doesn't get any lower cooldown on her Q per level. She gets it on, not even on her R. That's kind of weird. Shield amount, shield per champion. Your R gives you more shield for per champion you hit, but it also gives you a base shield, which is basically double almost per, per the champ. So the penalty for only hitting one champion isn't really that high. But if you do hit a lot of champions, it's a big old shield. It's like giving yourself a little Shen R. With the Lucids, it makes it way easier to take the jungle camps because your Q's on a lower cooldown, which is your main source of clear anyways. Plus, Lucids are cheaper, so it's going to let you get to your Rocket Belt sooner. Only reason why we didn't just straight up grab Rocket Belt first is because we couldn't afford it, but we could afford Lucid. So leaving base, basically without spending most of our gold, would have been a shame. Our R is up, so is Predator. We need to look to gank something here. This is when your clears actually feel good. So It's hard not to want to clear at this point. Oh yeah, we need to lay our Herald. I forgot about that. We'll go lay it mid. It's not first turret goal, but it is two plates. Don't mind if I do. EQ, get a few autos in. Ooh, the pain. Of course, another Shenar. Who would have guessed? Every R, man. He's, he's cucking our ganks pretty hard. EQ, kite it out. I don't know if I mentioned this, but every third auto, your W gives you movement speed and it also does extra damage. It's very good for Nico top. He doesn't know which one's which, that's kind of funny. He couldn't really kill us anyways, even if he guessed right. Hey friend, I have Predator, bud. Got him. Down he goes. Predator plus uh, Oracles is a sick way to chase Shaco's down. They don't have much they can do to outplay it. Nice, he's got camps up too. Taking them pretty quick. Even though you need the monster to stay inside of your Q, your Q has some girth to it to where you can still, oh my God, right as I say that I miss. You can still kite it out a little bit inside of your Q as long as you're using the edges properly. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, that's perfect. Those were the best cues of my life right there. <laughs> Every single one of those was terrible. The placement was just a little bit off. Our R is about to be up. Predator is going to be up soon. Now's the time we want to start looking for the gank. It's actually going AD Shaco. Interesting. Very interesting. Getting here a little late. Or are we just in time? Got it. And we got it. We snare him off his own box. That's an interesting interaction against Shaco because whenever he's trying to use his box to get away, you can E through it. It's going to snare him for basically over two and two times longer <laughs> and it makes it easy to land because it goes faster and becomes larger after it hits something. So when every time he throws down a box defensively, he just kills himself off of it. Go ahead and max our E second, W last. Like I said, if you're going to play Nico top, then going W max first is good. But Nico jungle is pretty crap. You can't clear your camps effectively. You need the AoE uh, consistent damage from the Q to be able to clear.
This is a weird fight. Oh, hey, Shen. I don't want to fight right now. I'm sitting on a lot of gold. There's no reason for us to be fighting like this. Don't mind if I do. Thank you very much. Boom. I'd say once you're level three, your clears are decent. But once you once your once your Q's actually max, your clears are above average. Because you can kite them out, play around the cooldown. And uh, almost feels like a Karthus at that point with your Q. Shen's watching me. That did what? Come on now. R is up. We can look for a predator. R, W, E, Q. Let's find it. It should be in range of my predator here. R, W. I have to flash for it. Nico, I mean, uh, the Yumi is speeding her up like crazy. It looks like the Yumi got rooted there. Oh, wow. I let her use that real soon. Don't mind if I do. I do want to back and spend my gold though, especially before a dragon fight. Like how the wolf randomly turns around. Sick. Rocket belt. You don't need to upgrade the mesh. You can leave it on Dark Seal honestly forever. Nico plays a little bit more of a frontline style mage since she's medium short range, and obviously her R is very short range. So your co standard combo is basically gonna be uh Predator into a RW rocket belt, basically. EQ. I'm dead here. Oh, maybe not. I think we hit him there. Hey, he's, he's here. I have my items in really weird slots. Looks like the team's going for the chase down. We'll just start this then. I wonder if we could solo it with this little HP with no smite. Our jungle item is healing us a lot. I think we actually could. We're getting back up to over 700 HP off of our abilities, and then it knocks us back down to 650. Yeah, we could actually solo this. I mean, I'd rather get help, but... It's cool that even Nico jungle can solo dragon once she has an item. Or two, <laughs> specifically two. All righty, time to lay Harold. Trying to get as much mana back as I can by lingering in my own jungle. Try to rocket belt into him with the EQ. I don't think we need to R for that. Just nail him with the autos. If you don't need to use R, there's no point. Let's hold on to it. Aatrox is going to destroy these guys. W into them. We get the E down into the Q. Holy crap. They got Giga AoE damage. And somehow MF died. She must have been tanking turret. They lost so much there. And they quit. That's hilarious. That was a lot of fun. So we'll go ahead and do a part two. I'll see you guys there. Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to part two of Nico in the Jungle. We have the same exact setup with the Predator goods and the Celerity Water Walking secondary runes with attack speed, AP, and armor. It's going to be same thing. So start Leechless, let your teammates know, tell them to keep watch. This game, uh, I did the same thing, told them to keep watch. It looks like some of them kind of are, some of them kind of aren't. It's usually hit or miss when it comes to your mid and top. Usually one of them kind of AFKs while the other one keeps watch. We need to reset right now though or we're going to be late. Up against a Kane, I don't think this is necessarily a good matchup by any means for Nico. I think Kane does quite well against any jungle champion in the game, other than things like Fiddlesticks. Fiddlesticks can go pretty well against Kane because your drain still hits him even when he's in his R. You can fear him, force him to go Merc Treads, uh, Zanya's his burst, and your R generally can out damage him for a certain amount of time. So. Fiddlesticks is one of my favorite champions to go up against Kane. We're going to go ahead and hit it with a Q. 
and then we got pinned to see this is like the worst case scenario and we're gonna lose a lot of health if you do get pinned just don't start in the back of the camp like i did here or you will lose a lot of hp it's pretty much a worst case scenario auto attack into the e we may not have enough HP to gank after this, which is fine because it's a Nasus top and ganking for things like Nasus or Vladimir in the first early couple of levels kind of sucks anyways. And like I said, we do want to get to our Predator boots as fast as possible and ganking does delay it. So unless you think the gank's pretty much a guaranteed kill, I wouldn't go for it. Nasus is already missing a fair chunk of HP, so the gank's most likely not going to pan out. Doing our best to kite this out, chugging our potions. I think they should remove creep snare. I think creep block or creep slow is kind of fine, but for any minion or monster to be able to legitimately snare you singularly or uh, collectively, I think is just bad for the game. It's just a weird thing to happen. This actually looks kind of doable. I'm not going to do it though. Aatrox level 3, Nasus already missing a lot of health. I don't really want to. If it was any other top lane champ, I probably would have, but since it's Nasus, like imagine if that was a Darius or a Garen, or even something weird like Ezreal top, it'd be easy, but Nasus isn't going to do any damage, and Aatrox has minion advantage. Three ranged minions is the same as an AD carry in the early game. Go ahead and get a point in our W. Kane's going all in there. He's going hard. Looks like he did a few camps and then just cheese ganked. It's kind of interesting. He's still level 3 though. I wonder if this area was warded and he's trying to cheese me. It's possible. Alright, it's scuttle time. Don't mind if I do. I want to use this Predator. We'll go mid. This looks doable. We'll rush out on her. She had a, a minion wave, so this was actually kind of bad timing by me. I'm assuming her dash was on cooldown there, or she just didn't click it in time. It could have very well been on cooldown if she went in for a last hit she shouldn't have gone in for. That's pretty sweet. Just Predator in behind. Get as close as you can. Try to slow them with something if possible, then EQ. Weave in autos. She's basically kind of like a Morgana jungle, but I think her snare is a little easier to land since it goes through things. It's AoE. Alright, probably not going to come back to touch this bot lane. MF's fed anyway, so ganking for your weakest lane. Not the best idea generally. We'll try to focus down Katarina. That's our most gankable lane on Ironically, is uh, trying to kill Katarina. <laughs> that sucks. Top ganking for Nasus pre six sucks. Ganking for basically enemy champs on any turret with full HP isn't fun either. Yeah, Nasus just got. I don't know if he got soloed, but I, I guess he didn't get soloed. Looking at the Kane KP, that means Kane's probably top side. E into the Q. Going mid here when our Predator boots are up. You can go for Ingenious Hunter. I think Relentless Hunter plays a little bit better, especially for the initial ganks or late game team fighting gauges. Found it. Oh, we missed Q though. That's a Ripperoni. Even if we landed it, it would have been kind of hard to kill her. All we have is boots, really. We don't have any damage items yet. MF's pretty much full HP, but her and Yumi are low mana, so this is kind of doable. If my bot lane follows. She's trying to bait out my snare. But she walked a really bad way to try to do it. I had to queue early because I'm going to need another queue to be able to kill these guys. He doesn't know which one's which. I can't necessarily fight him though. Look at his items. He has a budge load. 
He has almost 2k gold spent. I think 1900, I think, is what that is. I only have 300 gold spent outside of my jungle item. Meaning, trying to fight that would be kind of bad for us. Yumi Kane combo is going to be really annoying. Zonis is going to be critical this game to win. It may not be winnable, though. It kind of depends on Nasus. If Nasus can start to find a footing, it'll make handling the Kane and Aatrox fairly straightforward. We'll go ahead and W out of the bush. Flash E. We get the extended plus... We get it to go faster, plus it gets wider. Even though it's hard to tell that it actually widens, it does. Got level 6 now, pre 7 minute 30. Not bad. We also have 100% KP, which is pretty solid. Auto attack into the Q. EQ, we'll put a smite on it. Nice. Go for the Aatrox. I'm gonna WR. Auto attack Q. I should have actually maybe waited for the E, maybe. Nice. I don't want to sit around for Kane. Like I said, he's got a lot of gold spent. If we try to fight him or if he catches us, it's gonna be really bad, especially with our R on cooldown. Go ahead, look for as much of this as we can get, and I'll pick up a Dark Soul as well. I want to start getting those stacks flowing. Predator's up. We could definitely look for a gank here. Anytime your Predator's up and you can come up from behind the enemies, it's easy. You pressure them with autos once you're close enough, or if they're slowed or CC'd, you hit them with the EQ. Super simple, super, super, super simple. Yeah, we'll go bot. MF's level 5. Even though she's kind of fed, her items aren't scary enough. If she was a full item right now, I might not go without my R, but she's not a full item. Well, Predator, she's with inside the circle. We missed our E on her, but she flashed. She should die for this. Yeah, now that's worth it. She flashed to get a kill, but now her and Yumi dies. So that's very, very worth. Oh, I wish we got that. Oh, well. We might actually be able to kill her. We have high auto attack pressure. I guess I didn't need to R. I didn't think my abilities were going to do that much damage. So EQ immediately into the R and was going to fish it. I had no clue she's only going to have one auto attack worth of health left. That was a little surprising. I guess she is behind. No HP, no magic resist item, so it adds up. That's why you always got to press tab before fights. I'm playing kind of sloppy right now. No one's out of complete item yet. You don't really count boots as a complete item. You just count it as like movement speed differentials of who's, am I faster than them or are they faster than me? So like Aatrox tier two, so he's faster than me unless I'm on Predator. If you're on Predator, you're faster than everyone pretty much. As long as you're moving towards an enemy champion. I miss Predator back when it was just movement speed. Kind of use it to get around the map. No one had to, you didn't really have to move towards an enemy champion. Back in my day. <laughs> the rune was sleeper OP and then everyone started to figure it out and take it. Predator's about to be up. We could look for the gank. Aatrox mi missing a huge chunk of HP. Nasus at only 99 stacks. It's kind of low. Nasus R is an insane ability though. It's like 3, 400 health plus 40 armor, 40 magic resist. We're going to blue smite into EQ. Or E blue smite. If I ease him in air, we can blue smite and slow him down. We get the kill again. It feels kind of bad to take it from the Nasus. It is what it is though. Probably for the best since like getting the Dark Seal stacks. They just got Dragon, so we'll look for some of this guy's camps. He hasn't reset and bought any more items. He still has the call field serrated. Cat is missing, makes me a little nervous. She could just be resetting for HP. Alright, we'll go mid. She doesn't have a wave to jump back to. And uh Yeah. We'll walk out out of here. Pressure with the autos into the EQ. It's really hard to miss your E if you get to use it at point blank range. They don't have human time to react. So just pressure with the autos. We came in from behind. She had nowhere to go to. Just don't throw out your skill shot too early if you're the one who has pressure on her. Just keep the pressure. 
they'll eventually have to do something that's bad for them to try to... I actually just missed my E on the Yumi. If that would have landed, she would have been dead. Soraka Hill was absolutely absent there, and Soraka may have just killed herself. That sucks. I needed to... Uh... Can my speed up a little bit sooner? I guess Yumi had flash though. It's rare to see a Yumi with flash. That, that means the Yumi doesn't trust their teammate. Or they took flash on accident, because flash isn't that good on Yumi. Might as well just go like exhaust heal or exhausting knight. Barrier, I think, is one of the worst summoner spells in the game. They should probably just remove it. Even if you're like, oh, but what if they have ignite and I want a defensive summoner spell? It's like. The speed up hill gives you a loan is worth almost as much as the barrier in its entirety, if that makes sense. Plus the hill heals you and a teammate, and I believe it speeds up you and your teammate. Yep, it's a speed up for you and your teammate, a hill for you and your teammate. How is barrier even half as good as that? Barrier is no speed up, and it doesn't shield your teammate, and it only lasts for a second or two. Very underwhelming summoner spell. I think ultimately they're trying to keep it out of the hand of bruisers most likely bruisers and 80 carries a champion who you just have to kill or you lose the game so they don't want to be able to run barrier exhaust and just be unkillable I'm gonna go ahead and rw walk him down i should have used predator there that was kind of sloppy of me realistically we didn't need to r there but it had been burning a hole in my pocket for a while Oh, I should have took in. That's my mistake. I should have taken Harold there. Since I saw Kane bot side, I saw him bot rise when I recall was finishing. MF still bot. We have more gold spent than her by a decent amount. We have the tier 2 boots differential as well, so we're faster. The mesh is like 1500 gold. The boots is like 800. So we're over 2k more gold than MF right now. We're going to go ahead and Predator into her, try to Rocket Belt E. Oh, she flash. She's naughty. Jeez. Got her with the Q. Nice. Even with her flash in the Yumi R, it wasn't enough. I have a feeling Kane's nearby. We, are, we have to get Hourglass to counter his build, otherwise he's going to one-shot us. Zonis also gives some decent armor. You can pretend to be your teammates. It's not that useful unless they're low HP. It's better used as a bait tool rather than an offensive tool. Got her with the EQ. The only time it's good offensively, so you're ganking, right? You're, front, you're hitting it from behind. If you're pretending to be a teammate who doesn't have a skill shot, it makes it easier to land your own skill shot because they're not actively trying to juke it. That's pretty much the only way it's actually helpful. Also, you can R while pretending to be them and it hides it for a while. So if I pretend to be Nasus, I can RW and bust a nut on them and surprise them. But even if you never do that, you're still getting almost full value out of this champion. So it's a relatively irrelevant part of her kit. You could climb from iron to D1 and never interact with her passive and it wouldn't really affect anything. Realistically, just positioning on her and using her abilities at the right time is what it takes. It's what it takes. R's up, Predator's up. We should try to find something here. It's time to look around. Kata, tier 1 boots. She's slow, she's got less items. We're going to RW into her. We find a double R and oh my god, we got a big fatty shield out of that. We're going to go ahead and pop Predator. Rocket Belt into him, hit him with the EQ. That was actually kind of nutty. They took so much damage. Look at Kane, he's two full item. And I know you're going to say, oh, but you have a full stack mesh. I got 12 or so stacks out of that fight. Like My mesh wasn't, it was like half full there. The damage boy against all these squishies, they have zero HP armor, zero magic resist item. Absolutely chunked. I 
Also, you don't get the benefits of your of stealing. Like if you pretend to be Caitlyn, you don't even get her auto attack range. The only stats it gives you are negative stats. So if you pretend to be a melee champion, you're only going to have melee auto attacks, that type of thing. It's very sad. We're going to go ahead and W away. I don't feel like dying here. I'm sitting on a lot of mesh. Looking for that play was kind of pointless. That's not our win con. We're so far ahead. Our win con is basically just don't throw and take all the objectives. We are in the driver's seat. All we have to do is stay in the car. <laughs> it's like when someone's washing your windshield or trying to interact with you when you're in your vehicle at a stoplight. You don't need to get out of your car and tussle with them. It's unnecessary. Just stay in the vehicle. Let the light turn green. And in this case, the objectives, when they spawn in, it's turning green. And then you take it. And if they try to fight you, if they try to break into your car and fight you while you're doing this, then you let them have it. But otherwise, like, what is this? I'm trying to take Harold. Why are you walking Kane into me? She's actually going to mess up my Harold. She probably thought I would save her, but it's like, bruh. What are you doing? No, she didn't hear my speech about the whole stay in the vehicle thing. She missed it. Like LeBlanc, whatever she was doing, even if she got a kill, would it change the game in a meaningful way? No, it wouldn't because she's already had our team's already had all we have to do is take the objectives that they spawn and win the game from there on out. We don't have to force plays. Speaking of forcing plays, I'm going to reset to avoid forcing a play because I have not sitting on a lot of gold. At this point, you'd usually go for a Robodon and avoid staff. Either one. You can go for Shadow Flame. Eh, it's, an, it's decent. I kind of feel in the void staff. None of them have magic resist, so maybe we should just go Robodon. It's hard to say. More forced plays as we're going in 1v4. Nothing to really be gained there. Even if you went in and got three kills, would it change the game in a meaningful way? Probably not. Probably wouldn't. EQ, they're all going to kind of group top here, I'd imagine. We're going to RW. Hit him with the EQ. Down he goes. Couldn't save Sorok, but at least Kane dies. He's one of their more important players at the moment. There's more of the gold on their team. More forced plays. When a forced play is at least for an objective, I kind of get it, right? But when it's for just kills, for the sake of kills, it's so... It's so pointless. Maybe if you have a mesh and you're trying to stack your mesh, I can see it making sense an Evelyn player. I understand the temptation of the mesh stacks. It's quite enticing. We're the furthest one up on the map as it was about to die. Yeah. Just needs to run to me. I can save him. Save him from himself. Is this warded? I hope not. Oh, <laughs> Whoa! we didn't have to use rocket belt. That's freaking hilarious. Imagine if we had electrocuted dark harvest. We're doing this stuff with basically without a keystone. Predator's practically only extra movement speed. It doesn't do much else. Got her flash at least. We don't have our passive full stacked right now. Now it is, so I'll hold on to it. We'll hit a refill, try to walk Kata down. She's underneath a turret. We'll go ahead and herald for this, try to cut off her exit. She's gonna go on to Sorok is what's gonna happen here. Auto attack into the E. Goodbye, Katarina. Never mind. She got away with no HP. going quick man yeah why am i chasing this kill let's just get a dragon 
chasing that champ is kind of troll. So hard to get to. She only has two or one boots. Come on now. Ridiculous. Still able to get away. Hop to a minion. Kane's dead. Great time to take dragon. And that's it. They quit. Whoa! We'll take a look at damage dealt, damage taken. Looking at damage dealt enemy champions, we have the most in the game. Looking at damage taken, middle of the pack. Looking at self mitigated, we're not going to be that high. Well, higher towards the pack. Not bad. For runes, pretty good value. You don't take predator for the damage. You take it for the mobility since you're practically a short range mage. But uh, all in all, pretty high value out of the runes. If you guys enjoyed this Nico Jungle gameplay commentary guide, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to hack the algorithm. It really helps out a lot. My name is Kingsticks. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.